Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the omental bursa, also called lesser sac. So, what is lesser sac or omental bursa? This is a subdivision of the peritoneal cavity which is present behind the stomach, the lesser omentum and the corded lobe of the liver. So, we can call omental parsa. This is a subdivision of the peritoneal cavity peritoneal cavity located behind the stomach, liver, lesser omentum, lesser omentum, Okay, it is behind the stomach, liver, and lesser omentum. Okay, and is communicated with the greater sac. by the omental foramen okay it is in front of the stomach bed okay omental bursa or lesser sac is in front of the stomach bed okay we got that so this is a subdivision of the peritoneal cavity located behind the stomach so this is the stomach behind the stomach lesser omentum this is lesser omentum This is liver. Okay. So it is behind the liver, the lesser omenta and the stomach. Okay. So this is the omental parsa or lesser sac. From here to here, this is the omental parsa or lesser sac. So this is the lesser sac. Okay, here this is lesser sex still. This is lesser sex. Okay, lesser sex. Okay, so we got the anterior boundary. Posterior boundary is formed by the structure which forms the stomach bed. We know that stomach bed are group of structure over which the stomach rest. Certainly in between them we have the omental bursa or the lesser sac. So what structure forms the stomach bed? Stomach bed is formed by the diaphragm, the left kidney, the left suprarenal gland, the left colic flexure or the splenic flexure, the transverse column, transverse major column, the pancreas and the splenic artery. They forms the stomach bed. So between the stomach bed and stomach we have the lesser sac. Lesser sac is also bounded anteriorly by the caudate lobe of the liver and the lesser omentum. Okay, stomach, lesser omentum, and the liver forms the anterior boundary. Stomach bed structure forms the posterior boundary. So we have this is the space. So this is a potential space over which stomach can move very easily. Easily so. That is the lesser sac 
and this is communicated to the greater sac to the general peritoneal cavity by means of omental foramen this is the omental foramen omental foramen or foramen of winslow or editors to the lesser sac okay we got the anterior boundary posterior boundary above the it has recess the lesser sac or the omental bursa has an upper recess that is confined by the diaphragm here is our diaphragm diaphragm and and the posterior and it is and the posterior layer of the coronary ligament it is confined above this upper recess lower recess it is communicated to the fold of the greater omentum this is the greater omentum okay this is the transverse column this is the transverse major column transverse major column okay what is this this is the duodenum this is small intestine with the mesentery small intestine other than duodenum and the mesentery this is the mesentery okay we got that so again it has upper recess it is lower recess the lower recess eventually will be compromised because this layer will be fused together together so lower recess will be lost eventually so we got this is the lesser sac or the omental bursa okay so how it develops what is the embryological origin it develops due to expansion of the dorsal mesentery and the rotation of the stomach dilatation of the stomach enlargement of the of the spleen it is a clockwise rotation of the stomach and enlargement of the spleen enlargement of the liver and fusion of the duodenum to the right side okay so this expansion of the dorsal mesentery eventually forms the omental bursa it is closed it is closed everywhere except it is open by means of omental foramen to the greater sac or, or to the general peritoneal cavity by means of omental foramen or foramen of Winslow or editors to the lesser sac okay we got the boundary now go to the clinical anatomy we learn a little bit embryology it is formed due to the expansion of the dorsal mesentery rotation of the stomach okay and the differential or, or enormous growth of the of the liver and the spleen okay so we got that now we we'll go to the clinical anatomy okay we we'll go to clinical anatomy this is a potential space so there may be collection of fluid here okay so collection of fluid in the lesser sac or omental bursa okay that is same as omental bursa how fluid may be collected stomach wall posterior wall may be perforated by peptic ulcer content may go there okay due to perforated peptic ulcer ulcer on the posterior aspect of the stomach this is one way another way collection of fluid due to pancreatitis this is pancreas pancreas okay due to pancreatitis 
we may develop pseudocyst. Pseudocyst. Okay, it is a pseudocyst because there is no capsule formation. There will be collection of fluid and creates will be inflamed. If it is inflamed, collection of fluid there. So there may be pseudocyst. Okay, so we got that. We know that this is the omental foramen. It has some other importance, some type of clinical importance, especially in cholecystectomy operation. Surgeon can control the bleeding from cystic artery by passing index finger behind it, thumb in front of it, and compressing the, the structure in the gastro, in the hepatodidinal ligament. Surgeon can control bleeding. Okay, so that's all about the omental bursa if you have any question please feel free to ask me please share the information with your friend and please subscribe my channel please support me have a nice day bye now